Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to find the acceleration vector of the very same position vector, but in this case, we're going to find it not in terms of the x and y components, but in terms of the tangential and the normal components. And here we have the definition. So we're going to need to find the tangential magnitude and the normal magnitude of that particular vector based upon our position vector there. And keep in mind that ds dt is defined as the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So, what is dx dt and dy dt? Well, this is x times i plus y times j. So dx dt, let me do it over here, dx dt is equal to the derivative of this with respect to t, which is equal to 1, and dy dt is equal to the derivative of this, which is 2 times 1 half, which is 1 times t to the first power, or simply t, which means that ds dt is therefore equal to the square root of dx dt squared, which is 1 squared, plus dy dt squared, which is t squared, which is equal to the square root of 1 plus t squared, or that can be written as 1 plus t squared to the 1 half power, since we're going to have to take the derivative again. Because to find the tangential component right here, we need to find the second derivative of s with respect to time. So let's go ahead and do that. So d squared s dt squared is equal to 1 half times 1 plus t squared to the minus 1 half power times the derivative of what's inside, which is times 2t. Notice the 2's cancel out, the t goes to the top, so this becomes t divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared. So that would be the second derivative of s with respect to time. So that then defines the tangential component. So this is equal to a tangential. That means we have half the vector. Now we need to find the normal component. But instead of trying to find the curvature and then the s dt quantity squared, what we're going to do here instead is do this. We can say that the normal component, a sub n, is equal to the square root of the magnitude of the acceleration squared minus the tangent component squared. So simply using Pythagorean theorem. And then we realize from the last video that the velocity as a function of time is equal to the derivative, which would be 1i plus tj, and then the acceleration was equal to 0i plus 1j, which means that the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of its components, which in this case is 0 squared plus 1 squared, which is simply equal to 1. And that makes it easy, because that means that the normal component of my vector here is going to be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus the tangent component squared, which is this right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's equal to t divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared, quantity squared. I think we can simplify that a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to the square root of 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. Now we can write that over a common denominator. So this would be equal to the square root of 1 plus t squared minus t squared all over 1 plus t squared. Now notice the t squares cancel in the numerator. So this is equal to the square root of 1 divided by 1 plus t squared. And this now becomes the normal component of the acceleration vector. So we have the tangential component, we have the normal component right here, so now what we have to do is simply plug that into our equation. We can say that the acceleration vector in terms of the tangent components and the normal component is equal to a sub t, which is what we have over here, that would be equal to t divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared, that would be times the unit tangent vector, and then plus the square root of 1, that's 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared, times the unit normal vector. And here we have the acceleration vector based upon that position vector, not in terms of the x and y components like we did in the previous video, but in terms of the tangential and the normal components. And that's how it's done.